Hey there, and welcome to Crochet Therapy. I'm your host, Barbara, for this episode of Morning Coffee and Crochet. And I have my coffee today. Oh, yeah. And in honor of Christmas in July, I have my pug mug that says Bah Hum Pug. Um, I also like this. This was a gift from uh, my friend Lynette. <laughs> and um, she lives in Tallahassee. And um, she's so sweet. She brought this. She knows that obviously we love pugs and um, always have. We've, I've always had a pug for the last, um, I would say, 25 years. I've had a pug. Um, a lot of them rescue pugs, believe it or not. I didn't pay for them, but since I'm pug crazy, people who, um, who know me and know that, um, you know, we know the ins and outs of a pug, you know, because pugs have very short snouts, they can't handle the heat, you know, they have bulgy eyes, you have to really be careful of their eyes. Um, it's very common for a pug to lose an eye for whatever reason, infection, or, you know, if it gets poked or whatever. Um, just different things, you know, lots of different things with, with pugs. And um, so people have given me three pugs, three pugs so far um, in my, in my years of having a pug. So anyway, I mean, they just outright give me gorgeous, beautiful, full breed pugs um, because for whatever reason they can't, um, you know, they can't have them anymore. And um, obviously they love their pug and they want their pug to go to a good home. So I like to think that we're a good home. Of course, my mom and dad has kept a lot of the pugs that I've rescued. <laughs> oh, uh, they, yeah. <laughs> Thanks mom and dad for keeping all the pugs. <laughs> This last pug that I was given, though, is Theo, and um, he's a love, and we've kept him over here. We haven't, um, you know, we haven't rehomed him with mom and dad. <laughs> he's he's a gorgeous little dog, and they love him, and they love Rosie, and um, they'll regularly babysit during the day. They just go over there, and um, the pugs, or the dogs go over there and spend the day with Nana and Grandpa, <laughs> so... Mm. Boy, well, that's my pug story anyway. So, TGIF, it's a great day. Tomorrow starts the weekend. Actually, tonight at 5 o'clock for most of us starts the weekend. Um, so, what are your plans this weekend? I have something special planned. Um, now, hopefully it won't rain. Hopefully, uh, you know, everything will align perfectly. And um, because I'm gonna have a, a guest on my show and she's gonna show us something really cool. Um, and so it's going to be um, a separate chit chat. So um, look forward to that this next week. Um, so in addition to the three morning coffee and crochets, um, I'm going to throw in, you know, a chit chat and then also um, um, the trip to Hobby Lobby. Um, so, because that's going to be separate too. So, um, anyway, just, yeah, just look forward to that. It's going to be a full week of, of episodes. Oh, you see that sun coming down, hitting me in the face? Oh, yeah, here it comes over the trees. Heat index 1 million. <laughs> oh yeah gotta love Florida I mean Florida is a great state to live in don't get me wrong and it's an even better state to visit <laughs> you know if you're gonna visit definitely go visit go to the beaches they're gorgeous um, you know the swamps kind of scary with all the alligators and everything but um, you know and that reminds me I need to take my um, time at work on my lunch and not crochet but actually go out to the lake there's a lake right near um, my work and um, it's a pretty big lake and there's you know there's always an alligator or something to show you so I need to do that so that you can uh, get a feel for Florida life if I can 
withstand the heat in the middle of the day. The problem is uh, with the heat index, it's, you know, the temperature might, I know the forecast for this week is, you know, one day is going to be 89. And when I say this week, I mean next week. I did a 10 day forecast on my phone and one day it said that it was going to be 89 degrees, but the real feel was going to be 102 and I'm like, what the what? So yeah, I don't like 102. <laughs> I mean, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, I'm a loaf of bread getting baked. I just don't like it unless I'm at a pool or a beach and then I absolutely love it. <laughs> so anyway, I don't know if you're like me, but that's my story and I'm going to stick to it. <laughs> so guess what? When I thought I didn't have any more whips to show you, I found another whip. Even I am in shock over this. Okay. I completely forgot about this whip. Now, first I'm going to show you my mistake. Okay. So this is really kind of pretty even though it's a mistake. Why is there so much noise first thing on a Friday morning? I just don't understand. <laughs> I guess people are getting ready to go to work or something. I don't know. But anyway, this um, is handled just like a solid granny. So you can see how it goes all the way over and then you add the two, you know, in the corner holes to keep growing it. Um, so it's like a solid granny. Um, and you were I was supposed to make six sides and basically it's just really easy so you know when you start a granny square you make four sides and then you just keep going well with this one you were supposed to make six sides on the first round go round and then just keep going and I I made a mistake and I made five sides so uh, then you're supposed to fold it up and you're supposed to get like half of a sweater. And when I folded mine up, this is what I got. <laughs> you know, this part is half of, you know, a sweater, but then this part is like pointy and odd looking. So I um, was totally confused until I read the directions, directions a little bit better. What this is, I found uh, a Facebook page and I am going to butcher the name and I apologize profusely. Um, it is Nus Duken. It's, it's a, I believe it's a Swedish website and they do translations on there. But what they do is they do a six sided granny square twice and then they sew them together to make like the top of a doll. So they make these flat dolls kind of like a flat Stanley I mean they don't even fill them that's what I mean they don't even fill them and then then they um, make the legs and they just do you know um, you know double crochet in a circle down there and they then they add a head and some little hands and then at the bottom little feet and they make them all different ways um, and it's kind of cool. It's really cool. So I just grabbed some yarn that I had. Um, this is this is really pretty yarn. Actually, it was a um, mandala yarn with little sparklies in it. I don't know if you can see any of the sparklies. I kind of wiggle it around. I don't know. But anyway, this one is not, this side's not sewn. But this side I did sew. I sewed across the top. I sewed across the back. Um, so that, um, these are two sewn together. So this side is sewn, but this side I have not sewn. So I would need to, oh, and see if you do it the wrong way. <laughs> there we go. I need to do, wait, there we go. Yeah, see, there we go. So that is, you know, I would sew across the top and then you even sew the front so that you have just a little flat doll. And then you make the, the pants and after you get it all put together, it's just this really cute little flat doll. Um, and they're, they're just amazing and gorgeous looking. I've seen ones where they've taken um, um, straw looking color and they've made um, um, 
a scarecrow, they've made witches, they've made Snoopy, um, they've made all different kinds of animals and they do change up the head, the head shape. Um, but if you're just gonna do a regular doll, uh, you know, just you can just do a small circle, you know, just a basic ball and then add the facial features. Um, you know, add a little hair or a hat if you want. Um, but anyway, the creativity is, is just unbounded. I mean, you just, uh, you know, it's, it's really amazing what you can do with these little, little flat dolls. Anyway, I just, I fell in love with them. They were, when I first saw them, they were a mystery to me. I just, maybe you've seen them out there, but they were a mystery to me. And I was like, how in the world are you making these little adorable little flat dolls? They've made dogs and cats and a really cute lamb. I've seen um, just every animal imaginable and the cutest little babies. And um, anyway, so yep, that was, I found that this morning when I was um, going through my, my craft room and um, I thought, you know, I'm gonna talk about this because this is really neat. I, it's a private group, you have to be approved to get into it. Um, and I know it starts with N as in Nancy, U, S, S, E, and then it, the next word starts with a D. Um, but if you just start putting that in the search engine for Facebook, you'll find it. Um, and just all these different ideas. They have patterns, which are really neat. Um, that group um, is very restrictive as far as what you can post. So it's just a great place to go get ideas. Um, but the person who designed this pattern, um, you know, she comes up with new ideas and then people post when they get creative and, and they post a picture or whatever. But um, the only patterns that are allowed on there and the only links are to their patterns so just be aware of that but um it's a really great group and full of inspiration because they're always posting a new idea or a new um a new design so anyway this is super cute and it's so easy if you know how to do a granny square if you know how to do a solid granny square that's even better but i've seen them do a not solid granny square too and that is equally adorable you just do a regular granny square, but make sure it's six sides, not five. Don't make my mistake. <laughs> six, six sides and um, make two of them whatever size you want your doll to be. And because you can decide, I mean, you are a creator, you are a crocheter, or you can do it. And, um, and then just seriously, all you're gonna do is hook onto, after you sew it, hook onto one side of the, um, of the sweater and then just start doing around um, until you get the pant leg as long as you want it and then stop and do, do another one, the same amount of rows. Um, you know, you can do balls for feet. You don't have to be super fancy and make all the individual toes and everything. They, they don't do that. They make it, um, it's just a joy-filled doll. You know, it's something that a little girl could take to church with her. Uh, it's not going to be noisy. You know, it's one of those little, uh, remember in the um, colonial days? I don't know. I mean, I wasn't around in the colonial days, so obviously we don't remember. But remember reading about the colonial days and how the little girls would have um, like a handkerchief doll um, to, pl to hold in church because it was silent and it wasn't going to make noise or whatever. You could do the same thing with this. It's kind of cool. But anyway, here's my, my whip, whip, <laughs> and it's super cute. And, um, and I do like it and I do want to finish it, but I just have not. Isn't that a cute little sweater? Cute little sweater. Um, and I've actually seen little girl sweaters made with this same pattern like you just keep making it until it fits your little girl especially if they're if they're little tiny i mean this you know if i made this like maybe one row bigger it, it might fit a baby um of course we don't need it here in florida right now <sighs> but um anyway well everybody's headed to work there's lots of noise out here 
and the sun is just blaring down so i'm gonna go i hope that you have a great friday tgif and have a great weekend and i will see you very soon i'm gonna go inside where it's cool and i'm gonna drink the rest of my coffee so stay safe be kind and get hooking.